Hi everybody, uh, this is Jamie. I'm going to tell my Sasquatch story for the first time ever publicly here on YouTube. Um, it was back in August of 1987. I was about 20 years old. Um, a friend, two friends of mine and, and myself decided to go for a hike with, uh, and camp out in the bush. So we walked, um, we, we were in Glen Rosa area of West Bank, British Columbia. Uh, we drove up to the end of what was then Weber Road. There was no real houses at the end of the road. And then we found the old irrigation canal and uh, followed that up into the bush for probably an hour and a half, two hours into the into the bush, into the wilderness. And uh, found a spot to set up camp for the night, um, fairly close to Powers Creek. And uh, we, we set up our, our tent and got a fire going and... Uh, Sitting around, we had uh, brought a little stereo with us, a portable stereo that ran off batteries. And we were sitting around listening to music and it got to about, I'm gonna say around seven o'clock at night, something like that. And up a hill from where we were camping, uh, we started hearing this weird sort of wood knocking noise. It kind of sounded like somebody had a big log and they were banging it up against another big log, like a uh, or a big rock onto a rotten tree or something like that. And it just kind of went thud, 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 pretty loud. And it, and it kept going for, I don't know, an hour or something like that. And it was up a hill. And we thought, what the heck is that weird noise? Like we thought, bizarre. Like what could that be that's making that noise? It's not a squirrel. It's not a deer. It's not a bear. Nothing would be hitting this thing sort of with a rhythm for any length of time. It was very puzzling to us. It was weird. Um, went on for, yeah, probably, I don't know, half an hour, an hour, something like that, quite a while. And we just eventually just ignored it, kind of tuned it out, kept listening to music, um, sitting around the campfire, chatting. And uh, about an hour went by and it, it, it stopped. And so we, we noticed that it, the noise had stopped. And then um, maybe like an, an hour later, it's starting to get dark and we hear like this cr crushing, uh, breaking of branches in the, in the forest, kind of far away. So we thought, oh, maybe it's a deer or a bear or something. We weren't too concerned about it. Um, but then a little later on, it got, as it was getting darker and darker, um, we started hearing it again in the in the forest, a crushing of little branches and walk, something walking around. So we thought, well, whatever it was that was there, still there, um, but whatever, we'll, we'll be fine. There's three of us, we're sitting around a campfire. Well, no deer is gonna come by or a bear is not gonna bother us or anything like that. So we weren't, we weren't concerned about that. Um, then what happened was it got a little darker and we, we heard this something walking towards us in the bush. Um, it was quite loud. Um, it was almost like it was running towards us. Uh, you lots of branches breaking. And that really kind of freaked us out because it was, it, it, by this time it was just gotten dark and it was, what we could hear was just outside of the, the glow of our camp fire. So, I don't know, 30 feet into the forest, something like that. You couldn't really see, but we knew that something was there and it had run towards us and it really scared us. So we all kind of stood up and we tried to shine our flashlights out and we didn't see anything, couldn't see anything, but it, it freaked us out. So we thought, well, whatever, we'll, we'll just, maybe it was just a deer walking by. I don't know. We didn't know. Uh, then something like about 15 minutes later, we hear it again and it's, it's, it's really loud. We look again, don't see anything. Um, but we're pretty scared by now and it's, it's, you know, it's dark. We just walked into the, into the forest for a couple of hours following this little tra trail and we'd already set up our camp. So we thought, well, whatever, we'll, we'll stick around. Um, then a couple of minutes after that, we were sitting around the campfire. We'd finally sat down after shining our flashlights into the forest for a while. We sat down and a huge tree, well, a tree probably about this big around, maybe like six, seven inches around, uh, came and came crashing down beside where we were camped about 20, 30 feet away, something like that, um, a, a tree, and it had broken off 
about six and a half feet, seven feet up off the ground. It had been splintered and broken right off. And it was a green, healthy green tree. There was, it wasn't a dead tree just waiting to fall down. It was something had broken this tree off. That freaked the living crap out of us and we didn't know what to do. And uh, it was, by now it was like 11 o'clock at night. It was pitch black out. Um, we weren't, we thought, well, we could try and walk out, but what do we do, right? So we were we were pretty scared by now. We'd heard this running towards us in the bush a couple of times, this thudding, thumping, weird noise uh, that started it all, and now this tree broken off. So, boy, that scared us. Um, we kind of sat. We built the fire up as quick as we could. We kind of sat back to back with with a big stick in our hands and uh, a flashlight at the ready. And um, it took us a while even just to sit down. But man, we were freaked out. Um, I should mention too, like we had our music playing before all this stuff happened and then we shut the music off as soon as we, all this running around in the bush. So we had, we'd stopped the music and we just kind of sat scared back to back for a while. And then I think it was one of us, maybe me, I kind of, I think I, we must have dozed off and I, I woke up at just at, at dawn when the light was, the sun was coming up at about probably just before five o'clock in the morning, something like that, around 5 a.m. And we'd all just kind of fell asleep where we were sitting. And what was weird was when we woke up, we heard that, that thumping, that, that something hitting a old dead tree or something like that up the hill from where we were. Quite a ways up the hill, like it, a, a steep hill, like we didn't want to climb up there to see what it was. We were also really scared. So it was just about light up an, enough to walk out. So we thought, Let's uh, let's just go down to the creek. We'll grab some water because we didn't bring any water. We're just gonna drink creek water. Uh, grab some water, you know, wash our face, get all uh, get all sorted out, and then we'll come back to the and and pack up our tent and grab our food and put our stuff in our backpacks and then we'll we'll walk back out. So we went down to the down to the creek. It was it was just around the corner and down from where we had put our tent so it was up here and around the corner and down through forested area we couldn't see our where our tent and everything was uh, where we were where we were washing up and grabbing water but we noticed when we were down there that the thudding noise that thudding thumping noise had stopped while we were down getting getting water and um, so we thought okay that's weird the noise has stopped and we were down there for maybe 15 20 minutes something like that and then when we came back to our our tent um, what happened, this was really weird, um, all of the food that we had brought um, with us was s scattered all around the campsite. And, uh, and this, this part freaked us out because we'd had a brand new stereo that was in, this, in the tent. That was still in the tent. But the food, like we'd brought bacon and eggs and stuff in a frying pan and cans of beans and stuff. Everything was out of the tent. Everything pretty much had been taken out of the front part of the tent um, and scattered around. And the eggs were all broken, including we had a, a, a tent, you know, those sort of triangular tents that, that a two or three person tent, they're old school tents, kind of triangular. And there's a, a tent post that kind of goes in the middle like that. One of the eggs, it's about waist high. One of the eggs was impaled on the top of that, that tent post thing so we just grabbed all our stuff as quick as we could and we hiked out and uh, I had not thought about it I didn't really know what it was and a couple of years later someone had said something about a Sasquatch and I thought well a bear couldn't have impaled the egg on top of the tent like that it would take something with some dexterity to be able to do that a raccoon I don't think it could have done that um, any of the wild animals out there couldn't have broken a tree a, off, a, off the ground, a green tree, a seven, six, seven, eight inch tree off the ground, uh, six feet up off, the, uh, like that would just, no, nothing that I could think of could have done that, um, except for something with some great strength. Um, so I started to wonder if it was a Sasquatch and uh, did some reading and some research kind of after that and found out that some of this behavior is actually very, very textbook Sasquatch, the thumping, the banging of stuff, the running at 
at people to try and scare them off, um, breaking of trees, all that kind of stuff. So I really started to believe that that's exactly what we encountered out there in, um, in, in the late 80s. Um, I really thought that that's must be the that was the only explanation I could come up with was the broken tree, the thumping, the trying to scare us out of its area. So, another friend of mine I was telling about um, years later. This was just a couple of years ago. Um, was telling him the story, and he said, "Well, do you think we could go back to that same area um, where you were all those years ago?" So we did. We actually hiked up there, and it was a little freaky. It was a little creepy for me to go back up there. We took my daughter and a couple of his kids and um, yeah I was I was a little scared actually to go back so uh, we went up there and we found my daughter actually pointed out what looked like some kind of a a shelter that something could have made and the only explanation we have for it would be a Sasquatch it was these sort of saplings that were all bent into a converging spot with a big log and a rock kind of holding it all into place. All you'd really have to do is put some uh, cedar boughs or pine branches or something over top of this um, thing and it would have made quite a nice shelter for the winter or you know to keep something out of, out of, uh, out of the cold a bit. So um, we have a video for that. I, I made that video a couple of years ago. Um, I haven't really shared it with anybody but uh, it's uh, in the description below. I put a link to it down there and uh, have a look and let me know what you think of my story. If anyone else has got any other other stories from around this area, I'd sure be interested to hear about them. Um, I've not really heard anyone else that's had um, an experience like we had uh, in this particular area. I know there has been a couple of sightings that I've read online around this area, but uh, Sure, be interested to hear your comments or your thoughts, and whether you think I'm crazy or if you think of uh, another explanation for the tree breaking off and the egg being impaled and all that kind of stuff. Let me know what you think. Um, subscribe if you like, and uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching.